okay. So uh, picking up where we left off in 4.4, we have the mean value theorem for integrals. We also have the mean value theorem for derivatives. What is the mean value theorem for derivatives? Uh, Anti-derivative of B minus anti-derivative of A, whatever it is. No, sir. Uh, calculus slope, slope, from oh. slope from calc equals slope from algebra. This is something completely different. Uh, this uh, fundamental theorem of calculus. That's I'm sorry, what? The fundamental yeah, that we're getting fundamental theorem of calculus part two today. That's the first part of the fundamental. That's the easier part. Today's the harder part. Hey, thanks. Okay, thank you. Have a nice day. Um, so let's get started. Read that paragraph first. Let me know if you have trouble with any of the big words. Wow. I'm so confused. Why was it? Why did you Why wow? Just, I mean, I'm not criticizing. I'm just asking if you were. <laughs> I'm not really afraid. blown away by a glass of ice. Is that supposed to be part of a problem with your It will be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so everybody understand the concept? You got ice in the glass, it's all, as it says, uneven and scraggly. I think that's a word I don't know. I might have made it up. Um, and when it melts, it's all going to level out, right? And when it melts, you get water, and that water will be at the same level. This actually has a point. So here's my <coughs> function. This is the ice, as it says here. The function is the ice, and the blue is the glass. And so I've got a bunch of ice in a glass, and as that glass, or sorry, as the ice, the glass doesn't melt. <laughs> the glass melts, you've got bigger problems. If the, when the ice melts, it's going to level off at some water level. Okay. That water level is what we call f of z. It's also known as the average value. It's an average value, which means that the area above the average value and the area below the average value have to be the same because this is called f of z, or the average value. And then you'll see that f of z hits the function in a couple different spots. The spots where it hits the function gives you an x value, which we commonly call the z term. Okay, so z is the x value, f of z is the y value. <coughs> so we're going to figure out what that average value is. Again, I don't know if I said this already, but this, um, well, it says right up at the top. This function is also commonly known as the meltdown theorem because you're melting down the theorem to that level point. So if you don't remember mean value theorem for integrals, at least you can remember the meltdown theorem. And again, remember the rule if a function or if a theorem has its own name, it's really important. Okay, so there's f of z, that's the average value. And then like I said, z is the x value that gives us that y value. So normally what we do is we go from the x value, plug it into the function, find the y value. What we're going to be doing today is actually going backwards, going from the y value and finding the x values. Okay, so how do we find that? Well, you got a nice simple equation here. That definite integral is equal to the average value times the quantity b minus a. Okay, so let's back up a second. I know you're writing, but be patient with me. Think about this geometrically. I've got this function, and when it melts down, I find the average value. So the integral from a to b of f of x dx is what? What does that mean? Area. Area, area, under, the curve. area under the curve, correct. So it's the area below this red graph down to the x-axis. And if I level it out, I'm going to get this. So in essence, what it does is it takes the area under the curve and turns it into a nice little rectangle. Okay, B minus A is the width of that rectangle. F of Z is the height of that rectangle. So it's saying that the area of this rectangle is equal to the area under the curve using that guy. And I've got a couple examples to show you how this works. This is not the bad part of the stuff today. The second fundamental theorem of calculus gets a little advanced. Yeah. Well, how do you know when you when you have to use that theorem or whatever? Like, is it gonna, is the question and the test gonna say like use the mean value theorem? No, it'll say. Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. No, no, I was just. 
it'll say find the average value of the function from blah 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 to blah. blah. Okay. I got it. Like I said, I got a couple examples. Okay. And then it'll also ask you to find the z term too. So we're going to be in the example that I have. We're going to be finding both parts. So like the keywords are find the average value or find the z, whatever. Right. Okay. Not the z whatever, but. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Now all we're going to do is change the semantics, change the terminology, if you will. The f of z stuff is the traditional calculus approach. Now we're going to change it to make it a little bit more understandable. So this thing that I talked about, which is the average value, is just that. It's the level of the water when it melts. Instead of calling it f of z, I'm going to call it f of av because this is a little bit easier to remember. Again, it's just it's the same thing, just different terminology. Then the only other thing I did is I took that b minus a that was over here with the f of z and I divided it. So now I have a nice pretty formula that will allow me to calculate directly what that average value is. Do you have to use that formula? You don't have to do anything, just America. If it's far, right? Okay, no, but seriously. Like... You can use either one, it doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. It's really not that funny. I'm just, that's Monday. Um, where was I? Oh, so it's an average value, which means if you notice in the graph, the pink region up on top should match the light blue region underneath. There's that also the pink to the right. Yeah, there's this pink and this pink, and then there's that light blue and that light blue. And again, if we did it correctly, that average value should make the light blue and the pink the same thing. Thank you, Alex. Okay, so let's look at an example. I'm going to take a function. The function I'm going to take is x cubed, and I want to know the average value of the function x cubed on the interval from 0 to 4. Okay, so the problem would say find the average value or find f of z or find f of sub av, however you want to phrase that, for the function x cubed from 0 to 4. So I started by calculating this, and you should all be able to do this. I just took a, a definite integral here took the antiderivative of x cubed to get x to the fourth over 4, and now I'm going to evaluate from 4 to 0, which means I plug in 4, I plug in 0, subtract the 2, and I get 64, which means that the area under the curve of x cubed from 0 to 4 is 64 units. Now I take that graph <coughs> and I melt it down. So the peaks come down <coughs> lower, the bottom part starts to fill in, and I find that average value. And I'd like to be able to find that average value by doing this. Okay, so there's the question. You wanted, you wanted to know what kind of question you'd ask. Yeah. There it is. Sometimes it'll tell you using MVT. Other times it won't. Okay. Average value and MVT should be two terms that you realize go hand in hand. The nice thing about it is if you know the formula, it's pretty much just a plug and chug. What's B in this case? Four. What's A? Zero. Zero. What's f of x? x cubed. X cubed. Okay, the only thing we're missing then is that f of a, b, or that f of z. So I did that. This is 1 over b minus a times the integral from 0 to 4 of the function x cubed. We did this already up here. And I find out that the average value is 16. So if I take that x cubed function from 0 to 4 and I melt it down, the top comes down, the bottom comes up, and it'll reach that even point or that average point at 16. Any problems with that? Now we want to go backwards. We want to figure out if that's the average value, what's the z value that generates that? So for those of you that are visual learners, we've got a graph of x cubed from 0. So x cubed is that s looking thing, so it swirls up like that. And we're going to go out to 4, and we went from 0 to 4. As this melts down, again, the top comes down, the bottom comes up, and we reach that value of 16. So we get a melting, uh, let's see, four, 4 cubed is 64. So if that's 16, would be about here. So there's our F of AB. Now, my graph doesn't look very good because the area above it this area doesn't appear to match that area, but okay. we're going to pretend I got it right. What I'm looking for now is I want to find this point 
which is a z term. What x value will generate that f average, which we just calculated to be 16? Make sense? So we've done a lot of work where if I, if I gave you the function x cubed and I asked you what is f of 3, what would you do? Plug it in. Plug it in. 3 cubed is 27. No problem. Now we're going to go the other direction. I'm going to give you the value, and you need to go backwards. So I took two approaches to it. The easier approach is just to understand what I'm doing. I'm taking that value of 64, no, sorry, of 16, and setting it equal to the function. But I took a calculus approach there, and I get this fancy, come on, this fancy thing. All right, so there it is going back to the original formula. I wouldn't do this. I would just take the function, change x's to z's, because we're looking for the z term, set it equal to the average value and solve. So I would just do this. Okay? We don't really need this, but this is where these two allow you to generate the third step. And therefore, what's z? No. Oh. I'm kidding. You would be expected to know that it's 2.519. Oh. <laughs> How'd I get 2.519? Cubic root of 16. Wait, so what is Z technically in there? Z is this number here. Uh-oh. Oh, this is not good. Yep. That says 2.519. <laughs> so if I put 2.519 into the function, I'll get 16 out of it, which is that average value. Where's the 9? It's, it's right there. What are you, blind? I'm proud of myself that I remembered I was recording before I commented. Because <laughs> that would be submissible in a court of law. This is not working anymore. So now you're saying that I'm recording. Well, battery low is not the same thing as battery dead. Okay. When it's low, it's about to be dead. <laughs> Never have more. Stellar words of wisdom been spoken, Greg. Stellar. <laughs> stellar, yeah, I used stellar twice today. Three times, four times. Right. A lot of times. Wait, did you see the movie Interstellar? I did. Yeah, Is that why? Good. Very good. I saw a lot. Yeah, so yeah I also saw St. Vincent this weekend. Did you like it? Most did you see the theory of everything? No, not yet. It's on my radar. This movie oh, called St. Vincent? Really yeah. This movie called Stellar? Interstellar. Interstellar. <laughs> wow, you're just racking up stellar. <laughs> So What's Interstellar? Matthew McConaughey, Christopher so Nolan. Confusing. That's already out. Oh, yeah, it's been out for a while. I saw it like two weeks ago. I thought it was okay. Rave reviews, Oscar. They're saying Oscar for everything. I thought it was Did you see it in the book? It looked really good. Is that Wait, like, hold on. Like, I thought it was really good. Did you see it in the book? Oh, yeah. No. It's like four times more than you do. Wait, I Let me finish this, then we'll talk. All right, second fundamental theorem of calculus is the second part of what we did already. The first fundamental theorem of calculus is what you've been using a gabillion times to find the uh, definite integrals of the function. So that doesn't really need to be talked about. This gets a little confusing, however. So let's start with this. You know this already. This is our function. We're taking this function from A to B, and we're taking the integral with respect to the variable x. And when we do this, what's the output? A number. Okay, that's really important if you haven't figured that out yet. No matter what you do here, this is going to put out a number, some constant. And what does that number represent? Area. Below the curve. From, from those points. From, 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 from A to B. Very good. Okay, so again, you generate a function. Or sorry, you generate a number. <coughs> now we're going to change things. Instead of going from a number to a number, I'm going to go from a number to a variable. So I'm going from A to X now instead of just A to B. Okay, so this will be fun. No. Come on. Poopy pants. So we're going to see what happens when you do that. And then once we get that under control, we're going to take it a step further. I'm sorry, I was writing that. You're writing that? T H A P. Sure. Let me know when you're done here. Thanks. No problem. I'm here for you, buddy. Yes, I do. <laughs> OK. 
Good. <laughs> okay, so let's start with this. We're going to find what this is equal to. First things first, what's the antiderivative of cosine? <laughs> I missed something. Huh? See, I was thinking then, so whoever said it. Think and walk. He said first things first, I'm the realist. You can't do that. It's a song reference. You guys know I'm a little bit older than you, right? He's not really in my wheelhouse right now. There you go, what? Well, what is it? First things first. I'm the realist. Um, you, you realize that first and realist don't rhyme. She doesn't realize. That. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't think it's supposed to rhyme. Realist. You don't think so? She's going free flow she and not concerned about the rhyme. Well, no, she just sucks. <laughs> That's how I go. <laughs> there we go. So again, what's the what's the what's the antiderivative of cosine? Sine. 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 Nope. Sine. 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 Regular. So, the antiderivative of cosine is sine, and therefore we want to evaluate it from x to a. So we plug in x first, then we plug in a, and we end up with that. Okay? Nothing fancy going on here. You could all do this on your own without the second fundamental theorem of calculus. And there's a reason why these are t's, which I'll get to in a second. Who's the real <laughs> Okay. Back we go. Yeah. Now, the fun part. I don't just want an integral. I want to take the derivative of an integral. Great. Yeah. So let's go back to this. What happens if I take the derivative of this? What do I get? What happens if I take the derivative of this? Let's back up. What did we say this was? Was that plus c, Alex? Sounds good. When in doubt, just shut up, plus c. Love it. What did we say this is when you take the antiderivative and do all the work? A number. What's a derivative of a number? Constant. Oh, no. oh, no, zero. Zero. It's zero. <laughs> oh. zero. Correct. <laughs> okay, so we're good with that, yes. right? The derivative of an in uh, the derivative of a definite integral is going to be zero all the time because this is a number, and the derivative of a number is always zero. However, when we change it to one of the variables like we have here. If I take the derivative of this function, I'm going to end up taking the derivative of this. What's a derivative of sine? I'm sorry, what's a derivative of sine? Cosine. cosine. What's a derivative of the sine of a? Cosine. Cosine. Negative cosine of a. Zero. Zero. Why, Jasper? Because it's indefinite. No, sine of a, a, is, a, a is a number. number. It's a number. So sine of a is a number, and the derivative of a number is zero. So when we take the derivative of that, we end up back at the cosine. This, this What's the point of doing that? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Hold on, we're getting there. Wait, so A is the constant. A is a constant. And then X is the. It's a variable. Okay. So are these like groups? Nope. What do you notice from start to finish? Same thing. Well, it goes from cosine T to cosine. You just change the variable. Correct. Which is why I commonly refer to this as a variable change or a change of variable. T's become X's. If this is a Q and this is a P, then Q's become P's. That's, you don't need to go through that. No. Just, just realize it. Okay. Thank you. So but there's there's another little twist here. Oh, yeah. Huh? So like basically, so that's like for sure, like we could always just switch it. Mm -hmm. Switch your room. Let me, let me be clear on what we're talking about, though. This only happens when you take the derivative of an integral where the upper limit of integration is a variable, not a constant. This number doesn't matter. As long as it's a number, you're good. If these are both variables, then run. Because okay, we don't want to deal with that. That's scary. This work that we did here is just a derivation to show that when you take the derivative of a definite integral from a to x, you will end up back where you started. 
Because notice the A term drops out. It doesn't matter what A is as long as it's a number. Okay? So just for giggles, let's make sure you're all with me here. Assuming I can get my pen to work. It must have charged up some of the battery. What's that equal to? You're overthinking this. X cubed X plus 2x. Oh, I was going to say, I totally second guess it. So. Okay. Now, the process that you had started, Greg, <laughs> would get you to where you need to go. But when you got done, you'd be pretty angry because you just end up with this. So you could do 1 fourth t to the fourth plus t squared, put in x, put in 3, subtract them, then take the derivative, the bottom part drops out, and pff, you're just back to that. And then you'd be like, Ugh! Wait, can you do that again? <laughs> <laughs> What's the point of like the other stuff? <laughs> what other stuff? Are you talking about life in general, or how philosophical do you want to get at this point? Okay. Are we okay with this before we move on to the, uh, the creme de la creme? Oh, you didn't see that note down there. So, variable change. X's become T's, P's become Q's, regardless, you know, whatever your variables are. Which gets you this nice little, because it's in a box, it must be important, you get this. Taking the derivative with respect to X from A to X of F of T dt becomes F of X. T's become X's, done. And I guarantee you, one or two of you will forget about this and go and grind out that integral and then go, Ugh, when you realize you made a mistake and you could have just done the variable replacement. <laughs> Wait, so the second fundamental theorem of calculus is the variable replacement thing. They said it was hard. <laughs> just wait. <laughs> okay, so let's change it a little bit more. Instead of it just being x, <laughs> Let's make it some other function. What? No. What do you mean? It's a big answer. Uh, how about an x squared? Oh. Were you just playing the role of a? a uh, were you just playing the role? Were you sincerely wondering, or were you just being a good student saying, "What do you mean?" <laughs> I couldn't tell. You're acting like a plant in the audience. Well, what do you mean? Well, Meg, I'll tell you. <laughs> So here's what I changed. First of all, I changed a function. We'll deal with that in a second. I'm going from 7. Again, the number doesn't matter. But instead of going to x, I'm going to x squared. <laughs> so first things first, I take the function. I do a variable replacement. Wherever I see a t, I don't just put in an x. I have to put in that whole thing. That's why it becomes x to the fourth. Now the question is, where did the 2x come from? Change. Beautiful. Oh. It's a chain. So chain. I thought. So here it is in summary. When you take the derivative of an integral from a constant to another function, you sub in the function wherever you see the variables in the original integral, and then you have to chain on the derivative of the function up on top. That's where that two x came from. That's the chain. Yeah, well, Newton and Leibniz. Uh, what? Like, uh, yeah. what? <laughs> who, ever would who thought about making this in math? <laughs> Newton and Leibniz. What's wrong with them? Well, they're dead. That's their biggest problem right now. They've been dead for a while. I mean, that's pretty much when that when that happens, you're done. Meg. Right? But like, hold on, sorry. I'm just trying to What do you mean? I just need a little more explanation of why you are taking a chain. It's okay, so we could we could go through the whole derivation again, and I could take the function and find the antiderivative of this function, okay. and and 
what will happen when these problems pop out pop up is they're going to give you a nasty function because they want you to not be able to take the antiderivative like right now we don't know how to take the antiderivative of the square root of t squared they want you to realize what the fundamental theorem of second fundamental theorem of calculus says and that you replace the t's with x squareds and chain on the 2x but if we had an easier function like x squared we would take the antiderivative of x squared plug in x squared, sorry, t squared, plug in x squared, plug in 7, subtract them, and take the derivative of them. And when you do that, <coughs> when you do that, you'll get back to this, but there'll also be a chain rule there, because when you take the derivative, you have to chain that on. What I'm doing is sparing you that pain and suffering by just telling you the process that you need to go through, and hopefully you'll just remember the process and not necessarily the derivation like we did on the previous one. No problem. Okay. Is your algorithm instead of just like x squared, like a big Like x cubed plus 2x squared plus 4. <coughs> <coughs> so, so, so where that comes from? No. No, because if you. Wait, wait. Yes, there will be. Slowly, slowly coming. Hold on. The thing you derived. Wait. <coughs> Hold on, I'm letting my pen read. Yes, what do you have to do? I don't know. Mr. Reedy. Hold on. I'm stealing the battery right now. Really? Okay. No, go ahead. I, I don't. I don't. Wait, I have my own. No, no, go ahead. Uh, you might lose your programs. I would feel bad about that. I don't. Have I mean, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't feel that bad. About that. <laughs> Plus, I've got these big fucking Energizer Industrials. Power small city with my. Okay, Demi, back to your question. You want to know how nasty can the function get? No. Okay. You got to recalibrate it. Four person pen. Yeah, you might want to recalibrate it. Recalibrate the system. That's a three. It looks like a three. Kind of. can't read it. Two X minus. And you're writing on other stuff. Yeah, Be quiet. This is all on the side. Does that say 2x minus 1? That's 2x minus 1. This is t cubed plus 2t minus 4. Calibrating won't help. Be quiet. I wager that it was. You're really like bad at marker. You never know until you try. Yeah, I'll calibrate. I'll calibrate it for you. Yeah, Randall tag team. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, I'll tag team. I'll tag team. I'll tag team. Step one, wherever I have a T, well, step one, get a new battery. Step two, wherever I have a T, I put in the function. It's invisible. I just put a new battery in. I put in a 2x minus 1. I'm not going to multiply it out because I'm not that twisted. And then, uh, what the hell? Then I'm going to multiply by the derivative of the function up on top, so I'd have a 2 on the end. Which is I'm like, what does that, what, like, what does that answer do? Yeah, yeah. What? <laughs> what? 
<laughs> this? Yeah, you get the derivative of the integral. And that's the answer. That's the answer. So why would we want the derivative? That's a good question. You don't, like, are we going to learn later or do you just not know? I thought we'd learn later. Okay, and also, um, so we'll, can you just leave it, like, if we have that problem, can we just leave it as, like, 2x minus 1 to the third? I'm not going to expect you to multiply out 2x minus 1 to the third. Yeah. <laughs> if it's something easy, then, yes. then yeah. Right. Would that give me points if I wrote that on the test? If you wrote that, sure. Well, obviously there's the answer, so why wouldn't you be able to? I can't even clear the screen. Okay, I think we're in business. I'm so glad I'm recording this. <laughs> Thank God we're done. <laughs> we are done. Yeah, we're done now. All right. So let's uh, take a look at the homework then.